the 22nd annual Harley Day here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. And it's not just because of these motorcycles. This is notoriously one of the loudest places to play because the students have the best seats in the house. When Bill Snyder first joined the program back in 1989, his first major change was bringing the student section down from the nosebleeds to the money seats on the field. This is how they do it in the Little Apple. Woo! Last week, the Bulldogs bulldozed and bludgeoned their way to 63 points. The Wildcats, meanwhile, wobbled and wilted for three quarters before weaving their way to two late scores. Mississippi State simply mauled, then balled. While Kansas State needed all 60 minutes to turn devastation into elation and now defend their turf named after an icon. That's why. From Bill Snyder's Family Stadium in Manhattan, Kansas, Mississippi State out of the SEC taking on the Big 12's Kansas State Wildcats. Wildcats will kick off and the Bulldogs will receive. Comes out to the 20-yard line, first down and 10 for Mississippi State. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones, chopping it up with Dusty Dvorak. Motorcycle Molly McGrath <laughs> down on the sidelines. She'll be bringing it to you in just a moment. Hey, partner, we get a look at Nick Fitzgerald of Mississippi State. Heisman candidate, holds a lot of SEC records, 11 school records. His first game of the season after one game suspension. First game since that Egg Bowl where that gruesome ankle injury, and it's the first time we're going to see him in this Joe Moore at offense. They're going to take more shots down the field, and he told us he's excited to showcase his arm and maybe take a few less hits. Yeah, a system that he really has taken a quick liking to. On first down, the tight end, Justin Johnson, makes the reception and picks up yardage out to the 26 gets five there's a look at the numbers on Nick Fitzgerald that was his first pass attempt obviously of the season as he completes his first one as well hasn't played since that Thanksgiving Egg Bowl game that loss against Ole Miss pulls it out that pass incomplete at the 44 yard line intended for Stephen Guidry, so it sets up a third down and five. And so far, partner, he hasn't been touched. No, he still has yet to be touched, <laughs> right? Last time he was hit was Thanksgiving Day in that egg bowl. And you know, an interesting thing, Luke Getzey told us whenever they got there, they were blown away with his ability to throw the football. When you think of Fitzgerald, you think of his running ability, but he's really done a nice job throwing the football so far in camp. Steps up in the pocket. And Fitzgerald Hit out of bounds. He takes his first hit of the season, a solid one from Elijah Sullivan. And he's right near that first down marker, but it's just a little bit short, apparently. Fourth down coming up. Big hit by Elijah Sullivan coming up the first time. Nick Fitzgerald's taking a shot in about nine months, and it's a big one on the sidelines. But just as big, Kansas State with early success, a quick three and out to get their defense off the field. Yeah, it's fourth and less than a yard, but they're going to punt it. Duke Shelley is back at his own 28-yard line for Kansas State. Tucker Day punting for the Bulldogs. The ball takes a Bulldog bounce all the way down inside the 25-yard line. They're going to spot it at the 21. A 53-yard punt, including the roll. First and ten for Kansas State. Skylar Thompson, the starting quarterback, he and Alex Denton split a lot of time last week in their close win against South Dakota. Thompson was eight of 14. And one thing I was really impressed with Skylar Thompson going back to last year, the way he finished the season, making his sixth straight start, had a big time game in Stillwater on the road and a game-winning touchdown pass in the last play of the game against a rival Iowa State in the season finale. 
Dusty, they're going to say the ball was actually touched, and they spotted at the 40-yard line. An illegal touch, so much better field position here for Kansas State. Thompson going to take a shot on the first play. Zuber had it broken up at the 22-yard line by Jonathan Abram, the free safety. They tried to hit Isaiah Zuber, who had the big plays last week. Well, they told us yesterday, talking with these quarterbacks, they had to take some shots down the field to back this defense up. You're going to see a double move on the outside, a little stutter and go by Zuber, but it's outstanding coverage by Cameron Danzler. Long, excellent cover guy, as you see Abrams come in to get the pass breakup. Excellent coverage down the field by the Bulldogs secondary. Second and 10 from the 40. Alex Barnes takes it into the boundary, put his hat down, and laid some heat on the Mississippi State defensive back trying to come and make the hit. Well, McLaurin took a jolt, but a seven-yard gain on the play by Barnes. Well, they told us he was a weight room warrior. Watch the weight room translate to the field as he gets those pads down and lowers the shoulder. And Alex Barnes, a very talented, skilled runner, had three fumbles a week ago. you got to think this one's personal for him this afternoon. Third down and three. Sweat got in the face of the quarterback, Skylar Thompson. And no one was blocking Montez Sweat. That's a guy that they're going to have to keep an eye on throughout the course of the afternoon. A great looking athlete and a big force off the edge. Well, he's a freak of an athlete coming off the edge, and he's working on Dalton Reisner, and he's just going to get home and get there clean. They brought pressure. He's the free guy. They're going to kick it to the left, and Montez Sweat makes Skylar Thompson pay 6'6, 245. And, and uh, defensive coordinator Bob Shoup called him a freak of an athlete. Andrew Hicks punting it. Back at the 17-yard line, Keith Mixon makes the fair catch. It'll be first and 10 after that 36-yard punt. Each team punting once so far. And welcome back, everyone, to Manhattan, Kansas. Motorcycle Saturday here as Nick Fitzgerald with a nice run between the tackles out near a first down. Got a nice block from his tailback, Kylan Hill. Nick Fitzgerald thought his career might have been ended last year during their Thanksgiving showdown against Ole Miss. He suffered a gruesome, cataclysmic ankle injury, but he has come back to the point now where he says he is running as fast as he was before. Fitzgerald keeps it himself and gets across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Picked up six. Neal makes the stop. You know, going back to you talking about when the injury occurred, he said the first thing he thought about, I may never play football again. And he was devastated. And they quickly, you know, let him know, don't worry about it. You're going to be able to fix this. You're going to be just fine. And I thought it was great talking to him. He said not only can he do everything he could before the injury, he actually thinks he might be a little bit better. Played again, a nice run by Kylan Hill. Down the sidelines on a dash. And finally brought down inside the 10. It'll be first and goal from the seven yard line. Well, Kylan Hill is an explosive electric running back who won the starting job from Eris Williams. Excellent blocking off the left side of your screen. It's gonna be a zone to the left. I love the cutback. And the, the speed in the open field when he breaks free from the, the secondary. Took one 53 yards last week on the first play of the game for a touchdown. He goes 47 here. Fitzgerald incomplete intended for Thomas. It'll be second and goal. Pass looks to be a little bit hot. A little bit high for Dedrick Thomas. Warhead's offense, a quick strike. High octane type. Take a lot of shots down the field, but they still like to strike balance and establish a solid rushing attack. Fitzgerald behind his receiver incomplete. 
tried to hit Hill. It'll be third down and goal. Dusty looked like there was a lot of traffic there in that side of the end zone. Quarter, quarterback sweep to the boundary, and as the defense came up to attack Nick Fitzgerald, the running back, Kylan Hill, continued into the end zone. Nick Fitzgerald had the option to continue to run or throw it. He tried to sneak it into his running back a little bit behind him in good coverage to break up the pass. Fitzgerald has a great height advantage with Mitchell 87 against the smaller DBs for Kansas State. Osiris Mitchell stands 6-5. He's split to the wide side of the field. Got some pressure into the end zone. Incomplete intended for Austin Williams. Good pressure by Daquan Patton to flush Fitzgerald out of the pocket. What's good pressure inside? Joe Davies comes clean. They're bringing pressure. 96, Joe Davies gets the heat. Coming inside, you're going to see him just work his way right up the A-gap. Nobody touches him. Also, Daquan Patton. I thought it was a really nice throw in the corner of the end zone. 85, Austin Williams unable to come down with the catch. And a big stop for the Wildcat defense. Here's to be a catchable ball by yeah. Williams. Chrisman now going to attempt this one from 30 yards out. Missed his only attempt last week from 40 yards out against Stephen F. Austin. But he knocks this one through. It's pure. What'd you make of Fitzgerald on his first couple of series there? The dude still got the wheels. He can move <laughs> around. He's throwing the football well. I can't wait when we come back to see one of the best and deepest defensive line in college football take the field used to the home fans section being right behind their bench so Mississippi State players are letting this get to them they've been jawing back and forth with the fans it's getting a little feisty down here on the sidelines guys Dusty you shouldn't be listening to those fans like that I mean hey you, you really hear that much you try to block them out man but yeah you hear it especially <laughs> when things aren't going right when there's a little bit of trepidation all right here's Duke Shelley on a kickoff return a nice return out to the 38 yard line Take a look at this defense for Mississippi State. Stout last week against Stephen Austin, giving up two yards here to Alex Barnes. Jeffrey Simmons, one of those guys, Dusty, we'll be keeping an eye on. An NFL-type talent, right? Oh, he's got first-round pick written all over him. He's six foot four. He's 300 pounds. He's all muscle. And the guy, he can sit on double teams. He can penetrate and get up the field. A true disruptive force in the middle of that Bulldog defense. Second and eight. This is Alex Barnes again, ran for 103 yards last week in that win against South Dakota. Picked up four on the play, so it's a third down and four to go. And for me, that matchup, that defensive line of Mississippi State that rolls 11 to 13 players, two All-American candidates, and Montez Sweat, Jeffrey Simmons, taking on that Kansas State offensive line. 113 starts and an All-American in their own right. Dalton Reisner look across college football this Saturday, and this could be one of the premier matchups of the day. Reisner against Sweat. On third down and four. Harrison motion trips to the wide side of the field. Thompson can run it, picks up the first down inside Mississippi State territory in the 44. He got 12 on that gallop. Well, Skylar Thompson is the quarterback that everyone talks about, his ability to throw the football. They forget he can also run with it. Drop back pass, nothing's there down the field. Pressure from the outside, but a lane opens up on the inside, and he gets up the field and picks up enough to move the sticks. Skylar Thompson played in eight games total last year, started four of them. First down and 10. Pass complete to Warmack. And he picks up a first down. Knocked out of bounds finally at the 12 by Jonathan Abram. Well, Delvin Warmack, he's the number two back. And he does an excellent job catching the football in the backfield. They're going to bring pressure inside. It's going to be man-to-man -man coverage. As Delvin Warmack's lined up as the number three receiver and just goes to the flats and nobody accounts for him. Easy pitch and catch and a good job picking up the blitz by the Kansas State offensive line. Picked up 18 yards. They hand it off to Barnes. Barnes running to the wide side of the field, tripped up at about the nine, where his knee touched Abram and Thompson making the tackle on that three-yard game. Second and seven.
Zebra split wide to the bottom of your screen. A little heat coming, and they got to Thompson. He put it on the ground, it's loose. And the Bulldogs bludgeon the Kansas State quarterback, the sack and scoop. Leo Lewis with a big time hit, and Gary Green with the fumble recovery. Well, we talk about Bob Shoup wanting to bring pressure. It's coming right off the edge, and he comes very clean, and he doesn't just get to the quarterback. Leo Lewis gets the ball out, beats the running back, Justin Sillman, and a big sack fumble for Mississippi State. Outstanding job coming off the edge, keeping it tight. And again, not just getting there to get the sack, but getting that ball out to get his, his offense the ball back. There's the hit, and that's a good old, good old fumble here. Now, the question is, does he have possession of the football through the hit? Sounds like with as much time as they're taking, they're going to say that he did. Wow. And that would be a huge turn of events for Kansas State. After video review, the passer still has control of the ball in his hand when his hand starts going forward. This is an incomplete pass. The ball will be placed at the nine-yard line, where it'll be third down. Will the play game clock operator please put 401, 401 on the game clock? His arm was coming forward. If you parse the official's words there, that seemed to be the key part of it. Take one more look at it. Hit from the blind side. I guess never fully loses control of the football. I would not have thought that based off the no. first look, but as they looked at it over and over and over and slowed it down, said he kept control. Huge break for Kansas State. You're still inside the 10-yard line. Third and seven, though. They can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Out of the backfield, incomplete. Alex Barnes had no chance. And it'll be fourth down coming up. And in comes their place kicker, Blake Lynch. It was four for four last week in that win against South Dakota. A diminutive place kicker at just five foot five. Former walk-on. Former custodian. <laughs> at the athletic complex here on campus. Just recently put on scholarship several days ago. I don't want to make it a Rudy story because that's not a game winner, but that's a pretty good story, Dusty. It's a fantastic story. <laughs> Yesterday I was in the Kansas State facility and I actually had a chance uh, to talk with his boss, Blake Lynch's boss yesterday, and he told me right before fall camp started, Blake came to him and said, I'm going to focus on football in school. I'm going to have to step away from my, my custodial duties. Obviously, his boss, his boss recognized and understood, understood. But when he found out he got that full scholarship, he said he wanted to give him a hug and a kiss, but Blake wasn't having it. <laughs> How many kickers have to jump into a high five with their holder? He, he needed all of that vertical leap. Great story. The eight yard line, Brian Cole. Got an alley up the side. Hurdled one tackler, makes it all the way out to the 45, and that was five foot five inch Blake Lynch on the stop. Good field position for Mississippi State. Starting from the 45, Fitzgerald kept it himself. And got about four on the play, tackled 
by Walter Neal. And one of the things about Nick Fitzgerald, he's so big, Jonesy. He's 6'5", he's 230, got that long stride when he gets in the open field, but between the tackles, he's a tough, big physical runner and hard to bring down. Yeah, very athletic, a lot more dynamic through the years than people thought. On the handoff, this is Kylan Hill. Hill moving the pile and picks up enough for the first down at about the 44 yard line of Kansas State. Got six on the play. Wyatt Hubert with a stop for Kansas State. Nice block by left tackle Greg Island. Pulls out in front. Nice kick out block to open up the hole. Second game of the Joe Moorhead era at Mississippi State. Former offensive coordinator at Penn State. Gibson in the backfield. Fitzgerald took a nice hit that time at the 42-yard line from Daquan Patton. There's a look at the lineage of Joe Moorhead. Georgetown, an offensive coordinator, Akron, UConn, Fordham head coach, and two-time national offensive coordinator of the year at Penn State. The way the offense exploded upon his arrival in Happy Valley, just off the charts, success. Mm -hmm. Moorhead has a couple of Western Pennsylvania guys on his staff. A handoff. That's going to be Nick Gibson. Ran twice for 21 yards last week. Picks up two there. Sullivan making the tackle. And third down and 17 coming up. Quality open field tackle by Elijah Sullivan. Very athletic. I think he might be the best of the bunch of linebackers. He's had a knee issue. He didn't play a whole lot a week ago. He's anxious to get back on the field here today, and he's been productive early. You got to get all the way to the 22 for a first down. Underneath complete to Gidry. Gidry on his scooter and got the first down for the Bulldogs. Move the chains. Gidry, one of the top Juco wide receivers in the country last year out of Hines Community College, picks up 19. Well, it was a three-man rush. They're going to drop eight on the back end. It's a shallow crosser for Stephen Gidry. And Nick Fitzgerald hits his receiver in stride, and there was some space in the secondary. And as you mentioned, partner, Gidry's got size, speed, and he hit the Jets to pick up the first down. That's the end of the first 15 minutes of play tied at three and here in Manhattan, Kansas at some point you got to get on that Bill Snyder Highway hit the next exit. And welcome back everyone. No, we're not in Starkville. Although a bunch of Mississippi State fans have made the trip here to Manhattan, Kansas. Tied at three as we get ready for the start of the second quarter. Mark Jones chopping it up with Dusty Dvorak and motorcycle Molly McGrath down in the sidelines. It's Gerald pulls it out and keeps it and is tackled well in the open field by Walter Neal. Four yard gain on the play. Excellent open field tackle by the nickelback Walter Neal. There's a lot of open grass for Nick Fitzgerald. He fights underneath the block. Gets the big quarterback on the ground. Said he felt as fast as he did before the mm -hmm. ankle injury. Second and six. Wide open. Touchdown Hill. <laughs> Kylan Hill had a couple of touchdowns last week. One receiving and one rushing. And he gets another one on that last play to make it 9-3. to three. Extra point to follow. Kylan Hill unaccounted for out of the backfield, wide open in the flats as he gets into the end zone. And boy, Kylan Hill, a lot of buildup, a lot of excitement about him. He showed up to play in Manhattan so far. Extra point is good. 10-3 ball game. Nick Fitzgerald with his 40th touchdown pass of his career. Nick Fitzgerald back on the field for the first time 
finally leads a touchdown drive for the Bulldogs. Kansas State got caught in a bad situation. Linebacker Daquan Pattons in man-to-man -man coverage with the running back Kylan Hill as we watch this unfold for Rod Green, the tight end, basically going to set a pick on the linebacker and not allow him to get over the top and cover Kylan Hill. His route runs right into the linebacker, which opens up open space on the sidelines, on the wheel route, and an easy pitch and catch for a touchdown. And Mississippi State finds the end zone for the first time this afternoon. We have a new quarterback now for Kansas State. Alex Delton in the ball game on first and ten. Hands it off to Alex Barnes. Delton last week was 5 of 14 for 91 yards. Didn't throw any touchdown passes. Had one interception. But he was the MVP, the offensive MVP, of their bowl victory last year in the Cactus Bowl against UCLA. He has a lot of experience. He's an explosive, dynamic playmaker and expect more quarterback run game with him in. Here's a look at it, Dusty. Picked it. Broke a tackle and picks up the first down near midfield. Picks up eight. Both quarterbacks played last week in their victory 27-24 against South Dakota. It was Thompson that led the team on the touchdown winning drive, though. Delton played the middle quarters of the ball game. Tough running by Alex Barnes. Barnes picked up about six. Abram made the tackle. He's been running physical today. Lowering those pads, taking on those blocks. Very physical runner. And Alex Barnes, he's six foot one. He's 225. Watch him protect the football. Remember, three fumbles a week ago. I like mm. the pad leverage getting down low and finishing off the run. Barnes again. Over the right side of that offensive line, picked up two. Jamal Peters made the tackle on the play. Nobody worked harder, according to the K-State players, than Alex Barnes did last offseason in the weight room. He actually had an internship at one of the local boutique fitness gyms and put in two hours per day of extra work on top of Kansas State's regular workouts. He got swole. Chris Dawson called him a workout warrior. Third down and four. K State. And a first down run by Alex Delton. Thompson making the tackle on the play, but a pickup of four. Barnes went for over 100 yards last week, 103 to be exact. Love the patience of these Kansas State quarterbacks. They allow the blocks to get out in front. It's a quarterback power. They're going to pull the guard. Running back's going to lead up. But he's patient to wait to see what opens up and then accelerates to pick up the first down. That's five straight runs now, Dusty, for Kansas State. The quarterback that knows about running is one of their offensive coordinators, Colin Klein. As here's another quarterback run as Delton will lose a couple of yards. Peters makes the tackle. And now let's take a look at today's unexpected outcome brought to you by ExxonMobil. And last week, Penn State needed overtime to get past App State. Longhorns were corralled by Maryland and LSU winning big over the Miami Hurricanes. I mean, Miami looked underwhelming. They did not look very good at all in that loss against the Tigers. No, they didn't. LSU was impressive, but man, Miami. Second and ten. Boy, is that intercepted? What a pick by Errol Thompson. Wow, Simmons with the pressure, and Thompson laid out for the interception at the 35. What a catch by Errol Thompson. Errol Thompson's going to get all the credit for the pick, as well he should. But who makes the play? It's the nose tackle, Jeffrey Simmons. He's working on the guard, 76. Revis gets to his outside, gets a rip, hits Alex Delton as he delivers the football. And Errol Thompson, full extension. And he tucked it. I, I think that's going to stand. Wow, yeah. kept his hand underneath it. Ball never touched the ground. Very athletic play by the sophomore linebacker, Errol Thompson. I'm betting he played a little bit of offense in high school at some point. <laughs> An incredibly athletic play by Thompson to give Mississippi State the football. Nick Gibson now in a tailback. 
full extension. Watch him lay out, lay out, and then as he's rolling, he has the presence of mind to keep that hand underneath the football and never allow it to touch the ground. Outstanding effort by Errol Thompson. Thompson with the interception a moment ago against Kansas State's Alex Delton on the right. As a result, first down and 10, Nick Fitzgerald and that Bulldog offense from its own 35-yard line. 10-3 ball game with 4.48 to go here in the first half. Fitzgerald looking to pass it. Mitchell with the catch and falls forward to the 40-yard line, picks up five. Shelley with the tackle. And another turnover for Kansas State on that last series. That's part of the problem with Alex Delton. Had a pick last week, threw it right to a linebacker he didn't see. Actually could have had two more interceptions that were dropped. Last couple of years, Snyder's teams have been amongst the best in limiting turnovers. Fitzgerald completes it to Johnson and turns the corner on his feet. Inside the 30. And Justin Johnson with a big first down for Mississippi State. Let's go back to the studio. All right, Jonesy, thank you very much. An update right now on UCLA and Oklahoma. Bolu all a run from me. Pushing in from three yards out. Bruins up on the Sooners, 7-0. Jonesy, back to you and Dusty. Oh, a little surprising there, partner. UCLA losing one last week, but up on your alma mater right now. Kylan Hill in the ball game after that 32-yard game. Hill, nobody home up the middle. Hill, touchdown, Bulldogs. 28 yards. And Mississippi State leads 16-3. Kylan Hill once again. We see the explosive playmaking ability that he possesses. He's done a little bit of everything today. He's run it between the tackles on the perimeter. Got a touchdown pass. The true sophomore showing out here early today. And Bill Snyder Family Stadium has fallen deafeningly silent. And that's the end of the first half of players. They go to the locker room. Bill Snyder's team trailing by 14 points in the first road game of the Joe Moorhead era. Mississippi State leading it 17 to 3. Well, Mississippi State under Joe Moorhead going to kick off here in the second half to get things started. Zuber and Shelley back deep. This is Zuber. Isaiah Zuber brought down shy of the 30 yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for the Wildcats. Mark Jones chopping it up with Dusty Dvorak. Molly McGrath, who started the day off on a motorcycle down on the sidelines, it's been that type of day, man. You got to be on your wheels and on your right game today. Uh, the quarterback play a big discussion point for Kansas State. What'd you make of the two guys that were in there in the first half, Thompson amongst them? Well, neither guy uh, looked very good. This Mississippi State defense has been suffocating. A lot of pressure from Bob Shoup. They're coming after him. But like we talked with Skylar Thompson yesterday, Kansas State has to show the ability to throw the football down the field, complete some passes, and back that Mississippi State defense up. Skylar Thompson, I think, should be in the game. He gives them that more vertical threat in the passing game. He hands it off to Barnes with a gaping hole up the middle. And he runs for a first down out to the 44-yard line. This is how the day started. Molly uh, on those wheels. What's up, girl? Hey, guys. I'm just living my best life out here. I just spoke with Bill Snyder. He told me that Skylar Thompson is starting at quarterback in the second half for a couple reasons. One, because Alex Delton had that turnover. And another reason is because uh, Thompson is able to air it out, as Dusty said. He said the main thing is that they need to get the ball out quickly. And they're getting it into the hands of Alex Barnes on consecutive plays. 12-yard gain and another first down. And uh, Harley weekend here in Manhattan, Kansas. Uh, when Molly rolled in to start the day off, legit. That got the juices going on the oh. motorcycle. The crowd was making a lot of noise. The students are really close here. It was loud. Her swag at an all-time high when she came in on that Harley. <laughs> hey, two really nice runs to start the second half. Physical offensive line play, and Alex Barnes finishing off runs. Brian Cole bringing pressure from the near side, 32. 
See if Thompson is aware of that. They hand it off again. Third consecutive carry for Barnes. Trying to square those shoulders and turn it upfield. Leo Lewis riding him out of bounds. No flag on the play, but a nice gain of eight yards by Alex Barnes. Alex Barnes atoning for last week when he had three fumbles. Hasn't put it on the ground today. He ran right at the blitzer, Brian Cole. Fullback gives a little block. Brian Cole goes high. Alex Barnes comes right underneath. Nice pickup. That's a good no call. Yeah, he had his hand in there, but he didn't yank on it for the horse collar. I think that's a good no call. Ball at the 35. And a nice tackle behind the line of scrimmage by yeah, the Q-Dog. Jeffrey Simmons throws it up with a nice tackle. This guy is so athletic for a defensive lineman. I mean, he is going to make a lot of money. What I like, watch him work over the guard. He's starting in the shade. He goes all the way over the guard, unaccounted for, and he makes a nice tackle for loss. Had three and a half tackles for loss a week ago. Been extremely disruptive here today. Third and four. Simmons a great up front, impacting that offensive line for the Wildcats. They flush Thompson out again, Sweat, and he throws it away. He was outside the pocket. The ball went seemingly beyond the line of scrimmage, so no grounding on the play. As I said, but man, what about the handiwork of Simmons? He looks like he's got that whole jujitsu game down with the, the handwork, both he and Sweat, but especially Simmons, number 94. Violent hands, working those hands. He's got that nice, tight swim. Very strong hands. And, and that duo with Jeffrey Simmons on the inside, Montez Sweat on the outside, was so disruptive and so difficult for offensive lines to deal with. Boy, this is going to be stuck inside the five-yard line. Great punt by Andrew Hicks. Check that. That was Rodriguez in on that one. Person. And Dusty, I know that you have compared Montez Sweat to Hall of Famer Jason Taylor because of their size and uh, their stature. And if you look at this, I mean, it's pretty comparable. And Dusty, I know that you have a little story to add to that. <laughs> so I did the Mississippi State spring game and I'm watching this tape on Montez Sweat and he's got a great long arm. We haven't seen it today, but Jason Taylor made the long arm famous. I mean, it's what put him in the Hall of Fame. And I'm sitting down with Montez and I say, Montez, uh, I said, you remind me a lot of Jason Taylor. You ever watch his tape to pick up some of his moves? He looks at me, he goes, who? And I was like, for real? You don't know who Jason Taylor is? I said, the dude's a Hall of Famer. Go watch the tape and learn from a guy, a living legend. Kids, man, kids, millennials, Fitzgerald, Finds his target, Gidry. And Gidry, the top Juco receiver. But, but what about being able to relate like a, a guy like Jason Taylor, who was one of the all-time greats? Well, it was crazy is I didn't even look at his size and stature, and I made that comment to him, and I go and look at Jason Taylor, and they're almost the exact size. Mm -hmm. Height, weight, everything. Just the athleticism, the length, the relentless effort to the quarterback. I think Montez Sweat's going to have a great opportunity to play himself as a first-round draft pick coming up next April. This is Hill picking up about 70 yards. Walker making the tackle on the play. Yeah, when Jason Taylor was at Akron, he didn't weigh as much as he did ultimately with the Miami Dolphins. And, of course, if you don't already know, Jason Taylor, my neighbor down in South Florida, name drop, name drop. Uh, nice. Now a defensive coordinator with St. Thomas Aquinas High School, one of the top powerhouse football programs in the entire country the great state of Florida second and three gaping hole and a burst by Hill Hill is off finally tackled at the 13 a touchdown saving tackle on the play finally by Kendall Adams but a 52 yard sprint for the first down well, it's a zone to the left, but I want you to watch the vision on the offensive lineman. Everybody's going to work this way. And then... Boy, Kendall Hill. With great acceleration. Three receivers out to the top of your screen. It's 
Fitzgerald surveys and wisely with great discretion throws it out of bounds he'll buy himself another play it'll be second down and ten meanwhile partner Kylan Hill has rushed it eight times for 159 yards explosive playmaker he's got vision speed catches the ball in the backfield well he's just like they told us a complete yeah. package people starting to understand how he beat out Williams now for the starting job It's Gerald over the middle. Touchdown, Mississippi State, Austin Williams. He came down with it and hang on to it. RPO, run pass option, reading the safety. He's up, he's under duress. Outstanding catch. By 85, Austin Williams working out of the slot on a slant over the middle. Good, good read by Nick Fitzgerald and excellent execution on the passing catch. That was Williams' first touchdown catch this season and of his career. Mississippi State coming in ranked number 18. That was the question coming out of spring. Do they have guys that can step up at the wide receiver position? The coaches felt good about the talent they had. And Austin Williams probably one of the greatest beneficiaries of a great spring and fall camp. 21-0. A 21-0 run by Mississippi State when we come back. Look at the K-State Insect Zoo, opened back in 1999. The zoo offers an interactive experience for visitors where they can experience the sights, sounds, and smells of live Creepy crawlies. Uh, that, that's what the insects look like down in my neck of the woods in South Florida, in Miami. That's that's pet. <laughs> <laughs> this is Duke Shelley. Collared at about the 28-yard line. No flag thrown. Jonathan Abram on the tackle. Thompson trying to run it over the left side of the offensive line. Stopped cold by Leo Lewis. No gain on the play. The clock running with 8.13 to go here in the third quarter. Week number two in college football action. Mark Jones, Dusty Dvorak, and Molly McGrath down on the sidelines here on a beautiful day in Manhattan, Kansas. This Mississippi State Bulldog defense has lived up to the billing. Six tackles for loss. Already three sacks, takeaways. Flat out getting it done here today. Thompson, boy, into traffic and found a nice tight window to squeeze it through with a pass complete to Zach Reuter, two-time All-Academic member of the conference. Picks up 15 on the play. Good protection there by the offensive line, giving Skylar Thompson enough time to survey the field. And Dalton showing a solid wide receiver that understands how to get open. It's an open spot in the zone. Moves the sticks. And off inside to Alex Barnes and stopped by Jeffrey Simmons. They talked about Simmons and his work ethic. Look at the battle in the trenches here. Nice job of that offensive line in the previous play, giving him time. They said that Simmons is a quote unquote boss in the weight room for Mississippi State, number 94 up front. Can't miss him. Bob Shoup said he was probably the most talented defensive tackle he's ever coached. Thompson sees the pocket collapse, and he collapses with it. Back at the 47-yard line, Fletcher Adams was the first one to get there. They just come in waves, man. I mean, they just continue to roll people through, yet they continue to get after the quarterback. This time, coming off the edge up top, he's going to get to the quarterback. Fletcher Adams 
Working on Scott France, just a bull rush all the way to the quarterback. Pressure comes from the left, comes from the middle, and then Fletcher Adams able to notch the sack. Third and 18 after that eight yard loss. Thompson with a little more, more time. And Zuber broke the pattern off at the 32. A little malfunction at the junction by quarterback and receiver. And fourth and 18 as a result. Again, they brought the blitz. Mississippi State comes with pressure. Alex Barnes picks up one blitzer. Skylar Thompson has time, but receiver quarterback on two different pages there, partner. We talked about the battle of the trenches as we see Simmons on the sidelines now and his defensive lineman teammates. Who's winning that thing up front between K-State's offensive line and the defensive front of Mississippi State. Oh, it's the defensive front of Mississippi State. Nixon on the punt return. Elected to field it inside his 10. He's brought down at about the five yard line, a 46 yard punt. Nothing on the return. The Bulldogs leading 24 3 when we come back. Mm, call Hall right here on campus. Purple Pride, blueberry ice cream. A popular treat. It was created in the 60s. 6,400 half gallons are sold during the school year. Dusty, I'll Come take on, man. two they scoops to go. 6,400? <laughs> Golly. Oh, you do that in a week? Man, that's a lot of ice cream. <laughs> what you trying to say, man? <laughs> no. Hey, you work it off, obviously. Yes. You know, looking all shredded up here today. I like yeah. some ice cream, but man, the people of Manhattan love yeah. this and purple ice cream. Yeah, that's a little, a lot of dairy for you. First down and 10. Kylan Hill with an education and acceleration through the hole. And a first down. He has been extremely prolific this afternoon. Got 18 on that run. The, the burst, the explosion. Been blocking off the right side. Finishes off that run with Duke Shelley. You know, you mentioned Heisman Trophy. Maybe it's not Nick Fitzgerald that we should be hyping up. Maybe it's this running back. That's a great point. Kylan Hill, remember last week, his first touch of the season was a 53-yard swing screen that went to the house. He has 177 yards already. Fitzgerald on the keeper. Mark, in the offseason, Kylan Hill went to his coaches and said, what do I need to, need to do to make it to the next level? How do I become elite? So they put him on a strict workout and diet program. He lost 15 pounds. He said he has a much quicker burst. He's a little shiftier out there, more explosive. And you can see that effect on the field today. And another thing he said, when they learned that new offense, there was a lot of frustration among the team. He took it upon himself to act as a leader through all of that. Yeah, Dave. And he's obviously made a great transition to his system. Fitzgerald eludes one tackle and got rid of it incomplete in the neighborhood of Osiris Mitchell. Third down and six. Fitzgerald doing well to elude the sack. Walter Neal in on the coverage that time. Third and six. Walter Neal, nickelback coming off the edge, and it just shows Nick Fitzgerald's big physical stature. Sidesteps the tackle, though he doesn't complete the pass, he negates a negative play. Got rid of it, intercepted at the 34 by Hubert. That's the turnover of the Wildcats. Needed. Sullivan with the pressure. Hubert with the pick. Just what the doctor ordered, Jonesy, for the Kansas State Wildcats. They needed a turnover. They needed a spark. They needed some life. Pressure on the quarterback and a big time interception by Wyatt Hubert. It's going to be crossed up by the linebackers. Patton goes first. Sullivan comes second. He gets the pressure and the tip pass by Wyatt Hubert. Look at the defensive lineman thinking he's a running back. <laughs> Picking the pass off and hitting the sidelines. Excellent pressure as they dial up the crossfire blitz by the two interior linebackers. It gets home and Kansas State in action with the football. Let's see if they take a shot here in the end zone right after the turnover. Keep an eye on Zuber. He's at the top of your screen. Harris goes in motion. They got trips to the wide side of the field.
play clock all the way down. They get it off in time into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Zone. That's how you capitalize on a turnover. Dalton shown with his first touchdown catch of the season. And a much needed score to breathe life back into the Wildcats. Thompson to Schoen. And a little bit of showtime when we come back. Dusty will break it down. Giving you the actuals and factuals on that touchdown grab. We got a game. Fitzgerald with an interception a moment ago and Kansas State able to capitalize immediately on the touchdown reception by Dalton Schoen from Skylar Thompson. We got a two touchdown game. Wildcats kicking off. Jamal Peters. Brought down shy of the 25. Let's, Let's see if Nick Fitzgerald can swing the momentum back in favor of Mississippi State on this series. Keeps it himself, a yawning hole up the middle and a nice show of acceleration and speed by Fitzgerald out to the 13-yard line. Pardon me, a 43-yard line. Darrell Williams left tackle, 78, and you're going to see just a gaping hole open up off the left side. Huge, huge hole for Nick Fitzgerald. Mm. And with his athleticism and speed, that is not a place the Kansas State defense wants to be. Solid job up front by the Mississippi State Bulldog offensive line. Under two minutes to go in the third. Hill on the handoff out to the 49-yard line. And puts and southbound 35. On second and five. Hill again lunging for the first down, and it looks like he got it. Boy, what a day it's been for Kylan Hill. Pick the five on that one. Under a minute to go here in the third. 5'11", 215. He's well put together, Jonesy. Not just a speedster. Also a physical runner who's tough to tackle. That has been overlooked in the past by Cam Akers. Florida State as a freshman. Talented back. Fitzgerald on the keeper. And a nice gain of about eight yards by Nick Fitzgerald. This guy gets overlooked in the SEC with, with a lot of the physical, athletic star power in the SEC. Sometimes he tends to get overlooked, but he's right there with the rest of them. And he looks good running the ball. Yeah, Nick Fitzgerald yeah. looks fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. He's, got that, he's got those long legs, that long stride. Patience and man, whenever he gets it, whenever he gets a hole, he definitely knows how to how to burst through. Well, Colin Hill having a big day too, and you know what he's whispering to his coach, who loves the notorious B.I.G. songs. He's saying, "Coach, coach, give me one more chance. Biggie, Biggie, give me one more chance." Hill with more than a few thrills today. His team up two touchdowns when we come back for the final 15 in Manhattan, Kansas. And welcome back, everyone, to Manhattan, Kansas. For the fourth quarter, Kansas State, the home crew, down by a couple of touchdowns. Nick Fitzgerald keeping it again on the ground. And making it down to the 33-yard line. Patton making the tackle along with Walker. Today for Kylan Hill, 187 yards on the ground. Eclipsing Kansas State's entire offensive production for the day. He's been fantastic. You, you include the touchdown reception. He's got 203 yards and two touchdowns. Mm. The breakout day here for the true sophomore, Kylan Hill. Great fit for this new offense by Coach Moorhead. Hill again. Boy, he carried that tackler, Molly, for about four yards. 
Well, Mark, as we know, Bill Snyder is very traditional. You're not going to see a lot of turnover chains or dog collars on this K-State sideline, but they do have this block of wood that represents family, and it's full of quotes written down by the players. Now, I'm told this started back when Colin Klein was a quarterback for the Wildcats, so this is one of the traditions that they have here. Yeah, he is the face of this football program and has been for a while. 27 years on the sidelines and all. Fitzgerald picks up the first down inside the 20 to the 16. Very cool. You know, it's interesting. Molly referenced Colin Klein. This week, Bill Snyder was asked about Nick Fitzgerald. He went on and on about all the great things that he does. And he was asked, does he remind you of anybody? And Bill Snyder said, as a matter of fact, he reminds me of Colin Klein. Um, and Colin Klein now the quarterback's coach, co-offensive coordinator, third finished third in the Heisman Trophy was a Big 12 champion just a fantastic quarterback in this Bill Snyder offense and I thought that was high high praise for Nick Fitzgerald certainly is and here's a guy earning praise Hill with another thrill touchdown Mississippi State America be on notice mm. Kylan Hill means business the physicality we've seen the speed We've seen him be physical and run through arm tackles. I think that look from the Kansas State wow. fan says it all as Kylan Hill hits Pater for the third time this afternoon. Listen to the physicality of the pads popping. Boom. I mean, he's been running through safeties, linebackers. Eli Walker, the safety, comes up to try to make the play before the end zone. And he didn't bring enough to the table. I love that sideline alley oop celebration by Kylan Hill. Kansas State, you don't want that smoke. Colin Hill giving it to him today. Over 200 yards now on the ground. 209 to be exact. With 13 16 to play. Tell you what, this performance by Mississippi State is going to ring the alarm bell a little bit in the SEC West. We had a good look at Ole Miss last week down in Houston and their win against Texas Tech. But this is equally as impressive a game so far for the Bulldogs. There's a lot of people that wanted to know, is Mississippi State for real? Do they got a team that can compete in the SEC West? We've seen the defense be lights out. We've seen Kylan Hill hitting pay dirt. This Bulldog team. It's legit. This is an article that appeared in National Publication back in 1989. They were calling Kansas State Futility U. They were languid. They had L's. They had a history of losing. And then Bill Snyder came. In his first season, they only won one game. They're 1 and 11. But after that, he breathed new life into this program, and this is Shelly on the return. Big hit on Shelly. First down and 10 for Kansas State. Thompson keeps it. Got to the edge and slides in near the first. Boy, Adnan, I was surprised last week that they lost to BYU and then now a following it up with another seemingly disappointing performance first down run by Alex Barnes let's go back Dusty to that response by Mississippi State on that last score what'd you make of the significance of that that was a statement by that offense I mean Kansas State gets the turnover they get they get the quick score and they get it to a two score game and you kind of feel like they had taken some momentum but Mississippi State goes right down the field they punch it in to make it back a three score game that entire drive all on the ground Mississippi State as we got into the latter half of the third quarter in the fourth quarter have really uh, you know shown their physicality and dominated the line of scrimmage and speaking of dominating the trenches Kobe Jones knifing through to make a tackle the loss of about three on the play on Thompson second and 13 we're starting to see some of the second and third team guys filter in from Mississippi State but unlike a lot of places these aren't just guys they're throwing out there these are legitimate quality football players that they really feel like there's not much of a letdown when they come in the game and spell some of the starters
Barnes again. Stopped up by Corey Thomas, the backup to Braxton Hoyt. Uh, that defensive tackle spot, you mentioned it. Those second team guys are second team in name only. That's right. You, you talk about Kobe Jones, Corey Thomas, Chauncey Rivers, Marcus yeah. Spencer, Fletcher Adams. I mean, these guys could start a lot of places throughout college football. But what's so good and such a, an advantage for Bob Shoup in this defense to constantly rotate and keep fresh legs. And then when it gets to third down, when it gets to the fourth quarter, those guys are ready to roll. Third and 11. Shoots not backing off. Pressure coming from the field. Thompson got it off in time, but a little bit wide. Intended for Isaiah Harris. Good pressure by Marquis Spencer. And it's fourth and 11. They'll have to punt. He, the defensive coordinator. You mentioned it earlier um, with Bob Shoup. Just, just a great, great quote when he said, "We solve problems around here with aggression. We've seen plenty of aggression today. But you know, with this defense, when you've got guys on the outside that you trust that can lock people down in man-to-man -man coverage and safeties you trust, you can really dial it up and bring as much pressure as you want." Hicks points the nose down on the football and punts it. It bounced back the other way at the 20-yard line. Where it'll be first and ten for Nick Fitzgerald in his first game of the season. Has his team leading by 21 points when we come back. In the backfield, alongside Nick Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald looking deep, taking a shot. And once again overthrows his receiver, Stephen Gidry. We <laughs> Been uh, speaking of BIG, pretty juicy for Mississippi State out of the backfield. Gibson, got a couple blockers out there, stays on his feet and out of bounds at the 46. And now let's take a look at today's player spotlight brought to you by the U.S. Navy. Nick Fitzgerald, a look at his numbers in his. Stellar career at Mississippi State, fifth year senior, back after a catastrophic ankle injury. Thanksgiving weekend during the Egg Bowl against Ole Miss. So his mom took time off work to help him out with his rehab. And at first, he thought his career in football might have been over. Hands it off on the end around to Hill. And now Nick Fitzgerald's got the opportunity with his most talented team in a new offense. The Chipotle offense, there you coach go. calls it. Not a ton of ingredients, but a ton of mixing and matching going on. Well, when you look at this offense, it's a, it's a spread offense that implements the RPO run scheme. So the quarterback all more times than not on run plays has the opportunity if the defense dictates to pull it run it himself or throw it down the field and it's a and it's an offense that lives on vertical shots down the field one aspect we haven't seen much of here this afternoon he'll tiptoes out of bounds and Mississippi State would do well to keep that clock running with 703 to go second down up by 21 points Fitzgerald Eluding harm's way and runs out of bounds for another first down. You talk about some of the greatest athletes of all time as we watch some of those uh, Wimbledon, pardon me, uh, U.S. Open highlights on Sports Center tonight. Serena Williams at uh, what, 36, 37 years old, still out there. She's amazing, just strong and precise. She's doing it as a mother now. Amazing. Yeah. Look at those rushing yards today. 374 yards on the ground. And this is a top 10 rush defense from a year ago that Kansas State possesses. They have been shredded up front. Kylan Hill again making, making one tackler miss. Gains about three on the play. I mean, that's an area that they've, I mean, just Kansas State football, they pride themselves on certain things. It's about discipline. It's about special teams. Not beating yourself. And classic rush defense takes that away. And here today, they just, they've been ground and pound in their own backyard. So 
Snyder looking on helplessly, his team trailing by 21, but obviously with a different perspective this year, having battled and defeated cancer last season. It's Gerald, deep, incomplete, broken up at the two-yard line. Back to Snyder. You know, last year at this time, he was traveling back and forth between here and Kansas City for chemotherapy treatments. It was a very tough, poignant, enduring year for the 72-year-old head coach. Lost his grandson, as well as having to battle cancer, and uh, coming out of the season last year with a, a new look, but the same approach which has worked worked for decades here in Manhattan Kansas so he wants the coach as long as he can have an impact on the lives of young people he continues to do that as we spoke with those players yesterday just had the utmost respect for coach <laughs> Gerald over to Jones Dante Jones down the sideline inside the 20 yard line you know I was encouraged and it was fun to hear Snyder talk about the change around him, but him maintaining the same approach. But I was surprised. He said he had a Twitter account. I know. How about that? <laughs> he said it didn't last very long, though, because he says that when somebody wants to take the time out of their day to send him an email, to send him a note, or to tweet at him on yeah. social media, he's going to get back to him. And he said, I think the inbox got a little yeah. bit too full. He felt almost obligated to answer each and every person and couldn't keep up. First and ten. From the 18. It's Gerald off the play fake. Batted down nicely. A good pass breakup by A.J. Parker in the end zone. That's an outstanding play by A.J. Parker on Stephen Gidry. I mean, outstanding. Gets right inside, handling the football, almost intercepts the pass. Nice throw by Nick Fitzgerald, but better coverage to get the pass breakup. 13th play of the drive for Mississippi State. Hill into the boundary. Stayed on his feet. And tackled back at the 22-yard line by Reggie Walker. Hey, Mississippi State, I would say, has the deepest defensive line, but frontline talent, hmm. Clemson's got four first-round draft picks. They Scary. Texas A&M's got their handfuls up front with that defensive line. Third and 14, knocked away. And fourth down coming up, Duke Shelley. I'll tell you what, Duke Shelley listed at 5'9". He's got a pretty good vert. He got up there and broke that up, Dusty. He went up and got that. You know, he plays bigger than what he is, and he said throughout the course of the week in practice, high-pointing the football, getting your hands on the ball was a huge point of emphasis. He might have been doing uh, some extra plyometrics <laughs> with the hops he had right there. Yeah, look at that. He got off the turf. Get up and get you some, Duke. Got some bunnies. Bounce. He knows a lot of the, uh, the people from back home who reside to yeah. the ATL or Watson. He's got to show out. Christman. If it's, you know, mental mistakes, that's not something that you want to be overly happy about as a coach. This one from 44. And he... Hit it off the upright, no good. Duke Shelley, key on that last defensive play. Sometimes you gotta get up to get down. Been a long afternoon here in Manhattan, Kansas for the Wildcats and their fans at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Thompson in a quarterback swallowed up in the pocket. An incomplete intended for Barnes' as tailback. Chauncey Rivers got there first. It'll be second down and 10. Well, Chauncey Rivers is a guy that they're extremely excited about. Skill set, the way he can rush the passer. He's working on Scott France. Just a bull rush, and then comes inside last minute. Gets a good shot on Skylar Thompson as he delivers the football. Stone Mountain High School. Think they were loaded, Jonesy? Yeah. Jeez. That's some players. Blitz coming. Thompson flushed out, and boy, he made lemonade that time out of lemons out to the 28 yard line. 16 yard run by Skylar Thompson. Young man that has a great relationship with his father, 
Brad. I told his dad prior to this game against Mississippi State, these are the ones I dream of playing about coming to Kansas State, but it's turned into a, an afternoon nightmare. Hit as he released it, incomplete at the 42, intended for Schoen. They continue to get after the quarterback. Here's another name we haven't even mentioned today from the inside, Grant Harris. He's going to run an inside game with Jeffrey Simmons. And I mean, the hits just keep on coming, literally. X game in, or not game inside, nose comes first, the tackle loops around, a big hit on Skylar Thompson, who's going to need an ice bath tomorrow morning. You told me when this game came up on our docket, on that email, that you said, Mark, Mississippi State's got some guys on defense. You were not lying. No, 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 no. <laughs> I said they got dudes, Jones. <laughs> dudes. They got dudes, dudes on this right. defense. They definitely don't have guys. They got dudes. And there's a big difference. If you don't know, that's a dude. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> Back after this. You know, and, and I do think Nick Fitzgerald's a superior quarterback. But what Keaton Thompson's done, stepping into the Egg Bowl, playing well, starting in the Tax Slayer Bowl, getting a win against Lamar Jackson, and then the, the performance we just showed you, the statistics, a young man with a very bright future. Always good to have another guy. This Absolutely. is Nick Gibson. Third string tailback. Thompson came in after Fitzgerald suffered that gruesome ankle injury in the Egg Bowl last year and came up a little bit short in that game. In fact, uh, you know, that's one of the things that head coach Joe Moore had pointed out to his team when he first got there. He said, you see that mantelpiece? That trophy we played for against Ole Miss? That thing's empty right now. Mm -hmm. Ole Miss has won, I believe, three of the last four. Always an important game down there. Time winding down, nine seconds to go. Kansas State needs to get their house in order. They got UTSA next week, and then they've got to go to Morgantown at West Virginia as they start Big 12 play. Not the performance Bill Snyder was looking for, but they got to make the corrections and get things righted before they hit the, the meat of their schedule. The Brain Trust respectively meeting at midfield. Kylan Hill ran for 211 Fitzgerald right there. 159 yards on the ground and passed for another 154. As far as Mississippi State, this team is legit. A lot of questions, how good are they? Yeah. We're here to tell you this is a quality football team. Well, our final score, 31 to 10. Stay tuned for College Football Scoreboard on ESPN. For Molly McGrath, not on the motorcycle anymore, Dusty. I'm Mark Jones, and for the rest of the gang, right now we send it to the studio for college football scoreboard.